wallet to hold your cash and cards, no belt to hold up your pants, no problem. Enter the $5,000 Roseanneville giveaway by signing up for the email list for a chance to win a wallet, camera harness, belt, guilties, and more. Ends April 3rd. 55 winners, 55 prizes, 55 products, and 55 tries. I've got three different palladiums here that look identical. They're around the same price. They look like they're mostly the same pattern. But it's like a lot of these other brands where they have different products that look exactly the same, but nobody knows what the difference is. And we did an unboxing of these to try to figure that out, and really, there's not a ton of differences, at least from the outside. So we're gonna cut these in half, run through our test, really see if there is any difference between these boots and why you might want one versus the other for different purposes, and really just start settling, what is Palladium, what, are they, what do you use them for, are they decent quality, are they just a mall boot? Because a lot of people don't even know who Palladium is, because people see them nowadays as this affordable boot that you can get at basically any mall for under 100 bucks, that look, kind of like combat style, but most people don't know the reason they have that combat style is because that's what exactly what they used to be. Palladium used to be the makers for one of the most talented and proficient special forces in the entire world, the French Foreign Legion. And if you didn't know, the French Foreign Legion started over almost 200 years ago because it was created in 1831 to allow foreign nationals into the French army. And they've been involved in more conflicts than basically any other special force group because of how versatile they are and because they've been around for almost 200 years. And since 1831, the Legion has consisted of hundreds of thousands in active service at its peak and suffered from an aggregated loss of nearly 40,000 men in France, in France, Morocco, Tunisia, Madagascar, West Africa, Mexico, Italy, Crimea, Spain, Indochina, Norway, Syria, Chad, Zaire, I don't even know that country, Lebanon, Central Africa, Gabon, Kuwait, Rwanda, Djibouti, uh, former Yugoslavia, Somalia, the Republic of Congo, and about as many other countries that have had conflicts in the last 200 years, the French Foreign Legion has been involved in almost every single one of them. So how did this uh, boot maker that made one of the most badass boots for the most badass dudes in history end up selling their shoes at Journey for like 75 bucks? And are they still decent boots at an affordable price or are they just a shadow of their former selves using that Palladium name to sell an inferior product to people that don't know better or don't even know the history of Palladium? And we're kind of going in blind on this because we, we haven't cut apart one of the true Palladium boots used by the French Foreign Legion, and I've been begging Palladium to be like, hey, let me into those archives. Give me like your information. Send me one of those old pairs of boots. Let's do like a real deep dive into the history of Palladium. Um, haven't convinced them yet, and I'm still trying to find an old French Foreign Legion boot, so if you have a lead on one, let me know, because that's really what's, give it context to see what these boots are now compared to what they used to be. But we're gonna start with the tan, then go to the black, and then to white. So the brand's obvious palladium. The style is the Pompa High. They weigh 14.7 ounces. They retail for $70. They're made in China, and the way that Palladium positions this product, the greatest summer adventures never have a plan. From the streets to the summit, you need a boot that can do it all. The classic rendition of the men's Pompa is a lightweight and comfortable, thanks to its washed canvas upper, which will only get better over time. Okay, then we go to the black boot. So once again, palladium, the style is the uh, Palabrus Legion. They weigh one pound, 1.6 ounces. They retail for $75, they're made in Vietnam, and the way that Palladium positions this is, as the boot that marched the world from the French Foreign Legion, this stout yet comfortable piece has been reborn with modern materials with respecting its timeless heritage, using the original Palabrus mold and shoe last as a guiding light for this project. The original elements of the design have been made to be more comfortable, sophisticated, suit your demands, 100% organic, you know, just lug soles, anti-fatigue, tasteful stuff, decorative details, etc., etc. Then we go to the white boot, palladium again. Style is the Pompa High Originals. They weigh one pound, one ounce. They retail for $85, so the most expensive of the group. Made in China, and the way that they position this boot is the Palladium Boots classic Pompa style is rebuilt on a modern sole designed with the Paradrop technology to insert, ensure a soft cushioning step. This unisex boot pays homage to the original with its unwashed canvas and the same colors from its heyday. So, what I got from that is the tan boot is made for your adventures, for everything. It's made, it's like the adventure boot. But then the black one is the most true to the original paratrooper boot or the French Foreign Legion boot. And then the white one kind of sounds the same, but it's the biggest thing seemed like it was the unwashed canvas made the difference between the group. But honestly, it kind of seems like they're just talking about the same talking points in different ways. And that's kind of why I wanted to cut these parts. I'm like, is this all just like spinning the story of these boots in different ways just to sell the same boot over and over and over with very tiny details? 
what's what we're gonna find out. And if you wanna pair these, be sure to check them out with the links in my description. And so if we start looking at the materials, first, if we look at the tan, it's a 14 ounce cotton canvas, which is about 1.3 millimeters thick. Black doesn't say how many ounces it is on their site, but it is a little bit thicker at 1.45 millimeters thick. And then the harder white canvas is 14 ounces, 1.3 millimeters thick. But that's the, the difference between these three is, you know, the black's a little bit thicker, the white's a lot stiffer, and then the tan is really malleable and thin. You know, and it's, it's surprisingly stiff on this, this white pair, but the other two are really easy to break in. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of difference between them. And we burned them all, it seems like they're all cotton. We did the puncture test, the tan did 34, the black took 40, and the white took 53, so that extra stiffness made them a little bit harder to puncture through. So which would be the most comfortable? It sounds like the tan is going to be the most comfortable. It seems like it's the most comfort based. Then the most durable might be the white just because it's a harder canvas, a little bit thicker. And I think the black would also be a little bit more durable because it's just a tiny bit thicker. So right off the bat, very tiny differences, not a ton. But if we look at the lining, the tan has an eight ounce cotton canvas. The black looks like about the same thickness, but it's not a canvas, it's a twill, so a different weave. And then the white is also a cotton twill. So. Once again, tiny differences, but really not much of a difference at all. One difference that we have seen is in the insoles, because if we pull out the tan insole, just a very basic open cell foam insole with some fabric on top. The black pair, a little bit nicer. It's like, oh, it's a closed cell foam, has a little bit more squish to it. It's a little bit higher quality foam, doesn't bottom out nearly as quick. And if we look at the white insole, it's, it's kind of between the two. You know, if I were to rank these from worst to best, Tan has the worst, then I would go white and then black. I think the black has the best insole out of the bunch because the, the white's just a little bit higher quality than the tan, it's just another open cell foam. And which one's the most comfortable? Probably the black. I think the black's gonna be the most comfortable insole. And we also ran the ball drop and the tan bounced up 20 inches, the black bounced up 15, and the white bounced up nine inches. So that was kind of surprising to me because it was like the worst insole, I had the most rebound but it might have something to do with more of what's on the inside. Because if we fill and try to figure out what's on the midsole or underneath the lasting material, very basic lasting material, it feels like the tan have a little bit of foam underneath, kind of like they said in their description. The black though, I don't feel any foam, or at least not nearly as much foam. It feels like you're just on the outsole and I can feel voids in the outsole where I can't feel voids in e these other two. So there might be a difference in the, in the outsole. Because the tan and the white have a layer of foam, at least that's what it feels like, and no voids, but the black doesn't have foam and it feels like it has voids. So there are clearly some differences going on. So for, for a comfort perspective, the tan and the white are probably gonna be more comfortable because you just have more foam and squish underneath. You're not gonna feel the high spots and low spots from the voids in the outsole. Obviously you have an insole on top, but it's still worth mentioning. And so I think it's kind of this combination of all these little differences is what's really gonna make these boots different enough that you might want to consider one versus the other. But one thing that seems to be very similar is the outsole, because this is your classic uh, palladium outsole, where you've got this, this tread that is well known, and I really like this tread. I think it's a really good grippy tread. Sometimes I get, I get rocks stuck in the heel all the time, but it's, it's a good hiking tread. It, it grips well in winter. You know, it's just a nice aggressive tread. They're all the same pattern, just different heights, because you can see the tan is a little bit more shallow than the black and the white is also a little more shallow than the black, and then black and, or white and tan are identical. And I, the, another thing I like about these outsoles is these boots probably don't have a shank. I guess we can do a quick shank test. This is what you shouldn't do in stores to brand new shoes. No shank there, I'm out of order. No shank there, and no shank there. And the reason that these don't necessarily need a shank is this outsole is a unique combination of some of the attributes of a wedge sole that you see on work boots with the more lug sole you see in like hiking boots. Because these two bars that run across that gap caused by the heel help support the shoe or the boot so that you don't collapse without a shank. Because those will hit the ground and prevent a really low settling spot in the middle of your boot. Ideally, if you're actually gonna be using these, it'd be better if there's a shank, especially if you're gonna use them for anything other than just mostly casual wear. Like if you're really beating these up and trying to hike in them and use them for combat style stuff, it could benefit from a shank, but at least you got these outsole lugs kind of stabilizing the outsole. And I love this outsole. I think it's, it's one of my favorite outsoles. And even the compounds are different because the tan rubber is a 60 to 65 shore A. Black is 50 to 60 shore A, which is a little concerning, especially if there's voids in the outsole. And then white is also 60 to 65 shore A. So I think these two are the same outsole and this one is different. I 
pink. But when we ran the bar drop test, the tans bounced up five inches, the blacks bounced up 4.5 inches, and the whites bounced up 2.75 inches. So when it comes to the outsole, which is the best outsole, it's hard to say before we cut them in half, but I'm gonna say these are probably the better outsoles because I feel voids in this one, which is the most durable. Once again, probably tan and white, which is the most comfortable. You could say black, maybe those those little voids in the sole make them a little bit more comfortable, but they kind of all feel the same underfoot to me, and I don't think there's a big enough difference that they're gonna be that noticeable underfoot, but I would say probably the black are the most comfortable. And I believe they're all constructed the same. I think it's just a cemented construction. This is basically like a cup sole that's, that's glued on like a sneaker. And that's about everything we can figure out from the outside. So let's cut these in half and see if there's any real differences on the inside. Hey everybody, this is Brody and our good friend Manny the Mannequin from Roseanneville. Today we wanted to tell you guys a little bit about our EDC boot pocket kit. Now our EDC boot pocket kit comes with three pockets. The small knife pocket, the medium knife pocket, and the storage pocket. The dimensions on the storage pocket are about two and one eighth by two and a half inches just enough to comfortably and snugly fit a card. One really cool thing about our boot pocket kit is it allows you to keep your pockets clear of knives and cards and wallets, and instead keep your pockets clear for more important things like A1 steak sauce or a stick of butter. We offer these pockets in all of our leather options. We also have begun to accrue quite a few really cool boot leathers. So if you need a couple extra pockets so you can keep a stick of butter, some A1 steak sauce in your pants pockets, go to our website, check out our EDC pocket kit. Super awesome product. Check them out below. We will see you and your boot pockets later. I've got a boot pocket, you've got a boot pocket. Put cash in there. Roseanneville, buy one. All right, we got them all chopped. They're out of order. So let's start with tan. Then to black. And to white. big question, is there actually any differences between these boots at all? Well, there is to some degree because you can see the sole is different from the tan to the black. The black is what we ex suspected. It's got voids in the sole, so you don't, you have a little less rubber to wear through before those voids start uh, opening up. And then if you step in water, it's going to go up through the sole, but it is going to be squishier. It's going to be more comfortable. But for the, the true palladium, like uh, French Foreign Legion boot, you think they would not do this sole. You think it would be a little more rubber, a little harder, maybe a little more just grit to it. And this seems to be the least durable outsole of the bunch. And like we also suspected, there's no foam in there except for this insole. So you kind of lose the comfort of having the voids and the extra squish you get because there's no foam in there where the other ones do. And so it kind of balances itself out in my opinion. But, you know, keep in mind, it's like 80 bucks. You know, this is less than most sneakers. 
So, but I was just hoping that this one was gonna be a lot more like the French, like the true French Foreign Legion boot. And if we compare the tan and the, the white, obviously you've got a, a difference in the upper, but the sole construction is exactly the same. The outsole is exactly the same. Uh, the midsole foam layers are basically exactly the same. You got a little extra patch in the heel and everything else, the counters, everything else seems to be exactly the same. So now to the big questions, are these still the French Foreign Legion boot quality or are they just mall quality? Well, they're clearly mall quality. These are, these are basically sneakers built in the shape of a boot and they're priced like sneakers. They feel like sneakers. They're gonna be about as durable as sneakers. You know, if these were, like ideally, honestly, if, if Palladium would come out with like a $300 boot that was really true to the original, like French Foreign Legion boot, I think people would buy it. I would buy it because I like the style. I love the look of it. I like the toe bumper. I like the width. I like that old school military last. I like it's canvas and breathable. It's a great summer boot, but these aren't really a dedicated boot boot. These are a, a shoe in the shape of a boot, which is part of the reason why I have like three or four pairs because like they're just so easy to put on. They're so breathable, but does that mean they're worth the price? Well, I, for me, I think they are. I, I would almost rather have these than basically any other sneaker at like 70, 80 bucks. But obviously I like boots, you know, so take that with a grain of salt. But I still think they're pretty fairly priced, you know, compared to like a pair of Converse, it's similar materials and construction. But which is the best? Which is used for what? I honestly think the tan and, and white could be interchanged. You know, I think that's your most versatile one. It's gonna be the most comfortable. It's gonna be the most durable. If you like that heavy canvas, that rigid look, and you like the break-in process, you might go with a more stiff canvas. But if you just want it to run right off the bat, no break-in, these are pretty awesome. And, you know, honestly, this boot kind of kind of bummed me out. This is this was supposed to be the most like the French Foreign Legion boot, but it's 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 probably the least durable and the least comfortable. So it's going to be like really well built and really hardy and and have a like a little bit higher quality, less small version and a real boot version of the, the French Foreign Legion boot. But that's the real value of cutting all these apart, because you just don't know until you get them in hand and they're cut apart and you can see all the layers because anyone that read those descriptions would have assumed that this was your most durable, your most ready for the, the hikes and the hardware, when in all reality, their more affordable stuff was. And then, and finally, is this a brand using their good name to sell a bad product? In a way it is, but to me, they still kept some of the look and the styling and, and more of the aggressive aspects of it, even though it's a $70 boot. It is in some way Palladium using that good name to sell affordable products, but I don't think they're cheap. I think you get a decent boot for the price. I just wish there was a really high quality version. So let me know what you think and which one you would buy and what else you want us to cut apart. Help me convince Palladium to make a true French Foreign Legion boot because that would be so cool. I want one so bad. So thank you guys, see ya.